What if you had the ability to turn your imagination into a real object? Well, it was my freshman year of high school and I was in an intro engineering class and I wondered the same thing. As it turns out, I was about to learn how to turn that if into a how. At the end of the year, I was able to turn my basic imaginings into real designs. There's only one big issue, however. I was able to design all of these cool, awesome, and functional parts for everyday use, projects, and whatnot. But there was one thing in my way. Oh my god, bro. Oh, hell no, man. Unfortunately, that wasn't possible. Reaching in was futile. But one day, PCB Way reached out to me. They had something I needed. 3D printers galore. 3D printers that can print PETG, nylon, PLA, polycarbonate, resin. Wait, is that metal 3D printing with aluminum, stainless steel, and titanium materials? There's also CNC milling, but the name of the company is PCB Way. They, of course, make custom PCBs of designs that are sent in by anyone. I will definitely be using that for future projects. But back to 3D printing. I can now make my designs with materials I could have only dreamed of in the past. Thanks, PCB Way. In this video, I will be showing you how to make your own CAD designs, after which you can send your file to PCB Way for them to print, or you can print it yourself if you have your very own 3D printer. You can go into Onshape, link to make a free account below, and follow along, or you can sit back, relax, and follow along that way. Many CAD softwares have similar functionality, so this CAD Onshape guide could apply to those CAD softwares. First, we will learn how to use the main CAD tools and then use those tools to make something useful, like a cup holder. All right, so after making your account, go to the blue Create button, click on Document, and then name it whatever. Because it will never work if you name it anything else other than whatever. Just kidding. You can name it whatever. Um, actually, whatever this time. I'm just going to name it Thing. Because what we're going to be making is truly a thing. I can't even describe it. So what we're going to do is we're going to first start drawing in the 2D world. So we sketch and then you press on any one of these planes. I'm just going to choose the top plane. I'm just going to go to the top view and we're going to use this basically corner rectangle tool. And it's sort of like uh, drawing on a uh, digital drawing tool kind of thing. You have like a shape tool and you know, you kind of draw stuff out. You have this line tool, right, to make, um, you know, a line. So I'm just going to do something like this. There's also a circle tool. As you might be able to tell, it creates a circle. And that's pretty much how you draw lines in 2D. But of course, this is a CAD software and you want things to be precise. So we go up here to the dimension tool. And that is used to define like the lengths of sides and the diameters of circles and also angles as well. So I'm just going to showcase this. So I want this to be four inches because that is what um, uh, the units are in for Americans. So four by four, just make a nice square. I might want this thing, this circle right here to be two inches, something like that. Uh, what about this? Well, this is fine. It's pretty nice, but I actually want the angle between these two lines. So I just select those two lines with the dimension tool and I make it 45 or 45 degrees. Whoa. Okay. So here's a problem. This circle, um, I want it to be right here instead of like redrawing the entire circle, uh, which you could definitely do. There are multiple ways of doing the same thing, but I'm just going to show you uh, this other way is the coincident tool. So essentially what that does is it helps you align uh, points and match them up together. So let's just say I want the center of the circle to be at the midpoint of this line. So I go to the point tool and you might be able to notice there's a yellow square right there, which indicates the exact middle of that line. We got the point and then we just go to the coincident tool. You want that point to match up with this point. So then you just do that basically and it matches it up. Now, before I get to making this uh, 3D, I'm actually going to do something else. I'm going to draw another shape. So this is how you can create your own plane. So you know how there's the front plane, the top plane and the right plane. You could draw on these, right? But what if you want to draw in a different position? Let, let's say I want a shape out here. Well, the thing you can do is this plane tool which, uh, as you might be able to guess, creates planes. We can use the offset setting, and essentially what you're going to do is click on any plane, right, existing plane, and it will create another plane that is offset um, by any certain distance that you want. So I'm just going to offset it like that much, so you can specify the distance with a number input. So click that. That is good. And now I am just going to draw a circle sketch. I'm just going to select on this plane, and I'm just going to draw a circle, and that's pretty much it. Just a circle. Oh, and there's uh, one more thing in terms of positioning 
uh, your shapes. So I'm just gonna go to sketch one. I'm gonna edit sketch one so that I can edit sketch one. So let's say um, you had a rectangle and you wanted this rectangle to be in the middle of this square. Well, how do you do that? Well, you could use the dimension tool and math it all out, but there's a much easier way. Again, you can use the point tool. The point tool actually comes in handy many, many times. And essentially what you're gonna do is you just make a point in the middle of every side. So what we're gonna do is there's the horizontal and vertical tools, which essentially makes things horizontal or vertical to each other. So the horizontal tool, I want this point to be horizontal to that point. And as you can see, now they're horizontal and I want this point to be vertically in line with that point. Now, because we didn't dimension this rectangle, it's going to change the size of it as well, but you can always redimension your little rectangle or in this case now a square and it would still be in line so it would keep its uh, position which is really nice but i am not gonna incorporate that shape into our 3d shape so i'm just gonna delete it okay so the moment that everyone has been waiting for is making this a 3d shape when you take a 2d shape and you stack it on itself and stretch it out you get a 3d shape and that is essentially what we're doing here so with the extrude tool we can highlight all of our 2d shapes and you can also deselect the 2D shapes that you don't want to be stretched out. So I'm just gonna make this one inch. One inch is nice. And there you go. You have your first shape. Kinda looks like a knife or something, I don't know. This is not supposed to serve any purpose. Uh, you can also add on shapes by extruding other shapes from another sketch into your original shape. So you can kinda see how the shape that I, the circle that I extruded into this shape is now a part of that shape. The cool thing is you can take that circle and extrude a volume that actually cuts away at an existing uh, shape. So you can extrude to either add a 3D shape to another shape or remove. So uh, you learn how to extrude stuff, but there are other ways of making 3D shapes as well. So there's another tool called the revolve and you can use a revolve tool to make a sphere or cylinder, whatever. And this is something that is uh, pretty important for a revolve tool. You're gonna need a line to revolve around. So you have this shape right here and we want to revolve this part of the circle around this line and it makes a lollipop kind of shape. I'm going to try and demonstrate how uh, one could visualize what is happening here. So we're taking that 2D shape and we're stretching that out around the line that we just made. Pretty cool. So we could stretch it all the way around if we want to. So I'm just going to select these and it's going to revolve around that, make it full. Very nice. Okay, so this one is one of my favorites and that is the loft tool. And essentially what that does, uh, you might be able to see it in this picture, is it essentially takes a 2D shape and uh, takes another 2D shape and it kind of merges them or connects them together. Um, you can actually do as many 2D shapes as you want. So I'm gonna make a sketch. I'm just gonna draw a rectangle. And in order to do this, you're gonna need 2D shapes um, at different offset distances from each other. So we're gonna make a plane. I'm gonna sketch on that plane. So this 2D shape is gonna be floating above our creation so far. So there's another shape. And then I'm gonna create another plane. So it's planeception and sketch, yep, sketch on this plane. I'm gonna do a circle to make an interesting shape. So then we press the loft and then we essentially just um, select the, the shapes that we want to merge together and then we connect the circle. So it looks pretty interesting. You have your main shape, but it looks kind of boring. You wanna make a shell out of it. So there's a shell tool for that, very, very uh, helpful. And essentially it'll make a shell of an object if you press like the top surface of an object. If it's just hollow, then the whole thing would be hollow. It's just that the top isn't open. The other thing that you could do is you can make the walls more thick so like that or like this. Okay, so we have uh, pretty rough edges. You would want to smooth out the edges. And the way to do that is with the fillet tool. So with the fillet tool, you can click on a 3D edge and it would round it off essentially. And you can use this arrow to make uh, the like more material be cut off. And you can also put in a radius. So radius like that, 0.1 pretty nice. Uh, the other tool is a chamfer and that essentially takes a straight cut. 0.1. There we go. So yeah, 0 0.1 and 0 0.1. These are basically the distances horizontally and vertically. And there we go. We get our straight cut uh, downwards. All right. So uh, the object that we just made is horrendously useless. So let's make something more useful like a cup holder. Typically how I would go about um, designing an object is to sketch it out. So I'm going to go to my uh, all favorite MS. 
paint. Um, hello. My computer just doesn't want to cooperate. I, I don't know, guys. I don't oh know. My God, it's just. Bro. Oh, hell no, man. I'm gonna have to restart my computer. Um, one second. Okay, okay, we're back. So, uh, I'm on on shape, but I'm gonna go to paint. And I'm just going to start sketching away. I'm just going to look at a uh, water bottle, just for reference. So a cup holder, normally it's like, you know, a circle, uh, open top, and there's like this little cylindrical container thing, right? And it's like filled in the bottom. You can imagine like a um, cup or bottle goes in there, but it can't really like hang off of anything, which is the whole point of a cup holder. So let's just say that is the table right there. So in order for this thing to hang on, we're going to need some sort of arm that sticks out but if it's just this it's gonna like fall over right what i was thinking of is we need something to kind of you know clamp on all of you probably know what a bolt is a bolt when you you know like in this example when you twist the bolt it makes it go up or down depending on how you spin it essentially we're gonna need a cylindrical kind of looking thing right here yeah artists will will kill me right now there we go okay so so that is our sketched up uh, thread. I'm just gonna draw like an x-ray kind of version. So that's gonna be a hole and then thread down. So we got the concept down and we have a bolt to go into our threaded hole and then you turn it and then it like clamps on. Okay, so we got that. This is my water bottle. I literally just made some basic measurements. So it looks like it is uh, three and a half inches. So 3.5 inches. How tall do we want this to be? I don't know. I mean, it doesn't have to be full length. So I don't know, two inches. Sure, two inches. And then for the blocks, I'm literally just gonna eyeball it. Okay, so we need a cylinder. It's very easy to make a cylinder, you guys already know. Okay, I don't want this to be 3.5 inches. The thing is we want the inside to be 3.5 inches. I'm gonna extrude this up two inches. And then that is when we draw our circle on top of this surface, our uh, 3.5 inches. So remove that, 1.75. Sure, why not? And there you go. We have our little cylindrical container. And now we're gonna have to draw two of the blocks. Well, we can just sketch on this surface. So you can actually just hover over the center part right here. And you can draw a line out as long as it's like um, perpendicular to the cardinal directions. Okay, that is good. You're gonna learn a new trick. It's gonna be very interesting, very cool. Obviously it's not symmetrical right now, but I'm gonna use the mirror tool to mirror it. So I'm literally just gonna, well, one inch first, I'm gonna eyeball everything. Okay, mirror, so select a mirror line. Basically, what line do you want to mirror everything about? And there you go. You have this. Now, as you might guess, of course, we extrude. And we wanna extrude it down, so just click opposite direction, 0.3. There we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna have to redraw it. Great, so we're on the home stretch. So, uh, how do you thread a cylinder? Well, there's something called Thread Creator. Go to this plus sign up here, search up Thread Creator. So I'm gonna press Feature Script. So if you see one of these, the Thread Creators, press on that, and you should have Thread Creator in your toolbar. So thread Creator, and now you can create threads. We're literally gonna make a one inch wide bolt. I mean, we're gonna need some pretty big bolts. I'm gonna make that 0.75 inches. Actually, what I'm gonna do is 1.1. The reason why I'm doing 1.1 and not one is to have a tolerance. If you make the, the size of your hole, so I'm just gonna make that hole right now. If you make the size of your hole the same thread thickness as your bolt, it's not gonna fit once you 3D print it. Oh, okay, um, I'm just gonna 0.85 our threaded bolts will be 0.75. Okay, so I'm gonna go to Thread Creator. If you're a metric person, you can use ISO standard. Actually, I, I use ISO standard a lot because metric is better. So I'm gonna press this. I'm gonna do two millimeter. So that's two millimeter thread pitch, which is essentially for ISO standard, the distance between every uh, thread cycle, like every time it makes a full revolution. Okay, so we need the other part. We need the actual bolt itself. So I am going to go down here, plus sign, and then create part studio to create another part. So the bolt, very simple. It's literally gonna be two cylinders. I'm just gonna choose a random size, uh, 0.5, that looks good. So I just need to know the distance between this and this, because if our bolt isn't long enough, then uh, that would be kind of embarrassing. So the distance between this and that, so there's a measure, measure tool down there, which is very nice. Parallel distance is 1.7. So again, sketch another circle make it 0.75 and then extrude it out to 1.7 and we're selecting this thread face right here iso standard two millimeters in uh, thread pitch 
and there you go you have your bolt right here okay so it's all nice but you might want to see how it looks together so that's where assemblies come in so right now we have uh, nothing in our assembly but we can insert our parts so you can literally just press your two parts and then press enter and now you can literally drag your parts around and then there are tools up here so the fasten me basically you can select a surface face and the little colored wheel thing is essentially where you're going to mate with your other secondary selected face so we want this face center of that face very nice to basically join up with with that center the center of that circle and as you can see they go together and we also have the revolute mate which essentially allows things to uh spin on each other revolute right there so i'm gonna fix this as in make it stay in place fixed in place you can rotate this thing around so yeah that's the revolute then we have like slider mate. we have like a bunch of other mates but i'm just gonna go over the basic one so slider mate do this again a little finicky at times okay so if i were to fix this part do this. very nice uh, for things that like slide up and down uh, Yeah, all right, so I have shown you the main aspects of the cat software on shape But feel free to continue learning on the more specific more detailed tools as you level up as a freshman in high school I wanted to make things three years later as a senior I wanted to make the world a better place That is why I took one of my skills and showed you the ropes of it in this video even if you didn't learn much, I hope it gave you just a little bit of inspiration, just as my intro engineering class had done for me. If you were curious about turning your virtual designs into real objects, then I think you would want to watch this video about the power of 3D printing. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a thing or two, and I'll see you in the next one.